the RoboCop project, started in 2004, allowed the design of a complete humanoid robot to support research in cognitive systems. Uh, the robot is a uh, full humanoid, uh, sized at a, as a, a small child and um, with a lot of degrees of freedom, especially designed for manipulation, for vision, uh, sound processing, tactile sensing and everything that is human-like uh, has been added to the robot. The iCab has 53 degrees of freedom, most of them in the upper body. The hands have 9 degrees of freedom and they're equipped with tactile sensors, so the robot can, can also feel what is being grasped. Um, it has uh, more or less standard cameras, but also um, can move the eyes, so the head is fairly sophisticated. Unlike other platforms, allows for controlling eye movements separately from the head movements and so forth. The robot is open source, in both in the hardware and software, and uh, this allowed um, relative diffusion of the platform in Europe mostly, but also worldwide. We have robots in the United States and Japan and Korea. Most of them are in Europe uh, because of other European projects that supported the construction of uh, many other platforms. They're all the same, and this allows people to share results of research, uh, mostly in terms of software, exchange um, their knowledge, their specific skills, and uh, build a community that now count more than 200 researchers worldwide. During the eMorph project, we started with the integration of the neuromorphic sensing on iCub. Neuromorphic sensing is a disruptive technology uh, that is inspired on how biology works. Instead of uh, taking snapshots of the external world, uh, the sensors respond to variations and to what happens in the environment. And this is very important uh, in terms of compressive acquisition because it enables to go very fast and to only transfer information when there is something important in the world. So uh, we save a lot of bandwidth for transferring information and also we can have a different type of computation that is based on data on wide, with wide dynamic range and with very high temporal resolution. This was the beginning of the project and we integrated vision on iCub but the project is much bigger because we want to integrate different types of event-driven sensing from the skin to other types and uh, the video here shows how uh, it's important to have a very fast acquisition with video for detecting salient events where a person is clapping his hands in front of the robot and attracting attention. And this can be done thanks to the speed of acquisition of event-driven cameras. The RoboSkin project um, is another project supported by the robotics unit that um, allowed the design of uh, complete skin coverage for the iCub. This was a, let's say, a later addition to the design of the platform uh, that enabled uh, the, I think, the uh, realization of a unique feature of the iCub, which is uh, this artificial skin. The skin is a set of pressure sensors. There are about 4,000 sensors in the latest uh, development of the iCub, and uh, they allow the robot to feel contact with the environment. These it's very important for a robot that has uh, to interact with people, to interact with the natural environment, so with an environment that is completely unstructured, where objects may impact on the robot, the robot may hit the same space. The iCAP skin uh, is made uh, of capacity sensors. Uh, they're the same as the smartphones, basically. They're being customized to allow them to be conformable to the surface or the outer cover of the robot. Um, and also to sense objects that are not electrically grounded as the smartphones again. Um, also, we had to uh, reduce the number of wires that connect the sensors to the main CPUs and therefore we had to invent uh, very specific solutions that connect all the sensors through a digital bus to the processing units inside the robot. The goal of the CRIS project was to implement and study safe human-robot interaction, focusing on the, the problem of coordinating behaviors between humans and robots during um, cooperative actions. 
On the ICAB, we studied in particular the problem of controlling the force during interaction, and we implemented the um, experimental scenario that we still use today, in which the human can talk with the robot, uh, can uh, teach how to recognize new objects, and can show how to perform actions, physically showing uh, how to do the actions. We replaced the components that were set at the beginning of the CRIS project. For example, we are changing the object recognition capabilities with new, more evolved uh, algorithms, but the basic architecture is still the same. The European project Codico aims at developing a humanoid capable of exploiting contacts with the entire body. In particular, the project uh, starts with uh, coping with the simple contacts, like contact with the ground, and then to be able to exploit also contacts with humans. Humans are indeed very good at exploiting contacts across the entire body, but humanoids are not able to exploit contacts the same way humans do. Uh, during the project, we will develop in particular the ability to, com to um, cope with the uh, rich contacts first, and then uh, during the second and third year to cope with the uh, elastic contacts, so compliant contacts, and finally to be able to use uh, contact with human. So the ability to help and to exploit the support of a human helping the robot to do an action. Humans are very good at exploiting contacts with the environment. For example, when we walk or when we um, want to reach for a distant object, we exploit not only contacts at the foot in order to support our own weight, but also we can use hands in order to contact the table in order to reach a far distant object. Humanoids are, do not have this capability nowadays, and during the development of Codico, we want to give humanoids the ability to exploit contacts across the entire body structure. A lot of uh, foreseen scenarios are um, envisaged in the, pro in the project and at the end we want to be able to exploit also the support given by a human that wants to, for example, lift the robot from the ground. In this sense, the iCab is a peculiar platform because it has a distributed uh, tactile skin that allows to feel and to perceive the interaction not only with the environment but also with humans. The goal of the TACMAN project is to study how to manipulate objects uh, on the robot using tactile feedback. The project focuses on the development of algorithms for controlling manipulation during interaction with objects. Previous projects have developed uh, tactile technologies for robots. TACMAN starts from uh, the results of this project and focuses only on the development of algorithms that allow robots to manipulate objects using tactile feedback. Examples of applications are to regrasp an object to get a better grip, to slide explore an object to recognize it, for example, to recognize the texture or the corners, uh, and to regrasp an object using two hands, performing in hand manipulation. And this can be useful, for example, to grasp a tool and use it in a new way. European project Coroibot aims at understanding how robots can deal with walking in the same way humans do. In particular, uh, we named the project after Coroibos of Elis, uh, the first recorded uh, Olympic champion of uh, marathon. The uh, project in particular aims at understanding and implementing on different humanoids the ability to cope with the challenging walking scenarios like walking on flat terrain, but also walking on rough terrain, walking on slopes, climbing up the stairs, and walking while performing goal-directed actions. The idea of the project is to exploit optimality, and in particular, optimal control methodology that allows to perform and to plan actions which are optimal from the energetic point of view. During the four year, it is uh, foreseen an implementation of uh, the theoretical results on different humanoid robots, including the ICAB, but also the HRP2 and the Romeo humanoid robot. The project will, in the end, show the results and the theoretical results in a parkour scenario where the robot will uh, go through a number of challenging walking uh, situations. Experience uh, is yet another project that studies cognition. Um, it uses the iCub but also other platforms. We we've been doing uh, 
two main streams of research and experience. One has to do specifically with the ICAP, the ability not only to recognize objects and to manipulate them, but also to learn that certain objects are useful as tools so they can serve other functions. So for instance, the robot now can uh, use sticks or elongated objects to reach something that is out of reach, a bit like animals will do in nature, in natural environment. Uh, the second stream of research uh, has to do more with the software development and allows now the ICAB and other robots in Europe to use the same software platform to basically um, we can now recycle software across different platforms and make them communicate with each other. Uh, this is important um, also to foster the development of a community that goes beyond, beyond the ICAB. So the ICAB is evolving. Uh, the moment we designing a new version of the robot is completely done uh, internally at the Italian Institute of Technology. Um, it's called version 3.0. It's going to be a little taller, but also we're solving some of the mechanical problems that we noticed over many years of development. And um, this is only one possibility. Um, another direction of research in the development of the platform is to reduce the cost. Uh, in this case, um, the problem is that the ICAB is very, very expensive. So what we're doing is to look at um, changing the technology so to make it uh, cheaper. Cheaper in the sense that if we are going to build many, many robots in the near future, the cost will go down because the design itself has been done in such a way to use uh, cheaper components, but also the ability to use uh, production techniques that are cheaper by themselves. As part of the um, research to lower the cost of the ICAB, we look into new materials and uh, specific new type of polymers uh, that will make the construction of the robots much cheaper. Uh, and this is um, another line of research that is very important for robotics. So the use of materials that are, for instance, compliant, that have controllable compliance, which means that the robot will be interacting safely with people. Um, and this will bring about the possibility of building robots that are really useful um, in a normal everyday life. Uh, this is one possibility, but also there can be materials that are functionalized, which means they can carry signals or uh, they contain embedded electronics or maybe they use new type of actuators, actuators that again can be naturally compliant, uh, which um, in turn will enhance uh, safety. I think the main result of the ICAP project has been the development of the platform that is really shared in the research community. This is due to open source, uh, but not only to that, also to the availability of a robot that is very sophisticated so can fit the purpose of many different research lines. Um, the ICAB is just one possibility. I think in the future, um, the availability of common platforms will be uh, very important for research, uh, will enable benchmarking for instance, so the ability to test solutions um, across different laboratories, um, will enable um, research in robotics to be more scientifically based because everybody will be able to repeat experiments in different places, so it's not only paper based, so it's not only the publication of results but also the ability to share the software, the hardware, they will enable the research community to progress much faster. We'll basically be building on the shoulder of giants, uh, which means that we will really accumulate knowledge uh, in the future and robotics will proceed at a much faster pace.